Welcome back to SEC Media Days. Frank Frange along with Hayes Carlin. Our buddy Chris Doring joins us Home now. team right here, my guys. How are you, brother? Good to be back with you, Bouncing man. around, having some fun? Yeah, having a great time, man. This is uh, one of my favorite weeks of the year. You know, yeah. Not only because it means football season's close, but it feels like first day of school. Everyone's here together. you got the excitement of seeing one another. And maybe the last time... You know, a lot of us, even the ones that work in the SEC network together, will have a chance to be in person together. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Has it gone like you hoped it would? And we love watching you. My career? Yeah, yeah. You having oh, fun? Oh man, yeah. I just finished uh, last year my eighth season with ESPN, the SEC network. Eight just years. Uh, signed another two-year extension, so uh, you know, folks are are stuck with me for another couple years. But I, I I love what I get to do in covering these 14, soon to be 16 teams in the league, and the people that I get to work with in Charlotte are the best. You know, it's funny. Uh, I did not know it'd been eight years, but. We were having a beer the other night. I told you it's been 10 years. I've been going Jack. I didn't know that either. You looked at Chris. I know. Been doing I, was, I would have said like four or five I years. I know. It doesn't seem like 10. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, let's get to the Gators. Yeah. Are, any chance we do got we have to? We yeah. got, do we have any chance we have a sleeper this year? A you team know what's funny, man? I, um, I talk to a lot of Florida fans that have this optimism, and, and unfortunately I don't feel as optimistic about it. Now, you know, one of our good friends, Shane Matthews, yeah. thinks they, they can win you know eight games this year. I just look at the schedule. I look at um, you know the, the the quarterback situation. Um, I, I just have a hard time believing that they're going to be able to, to win that many ball games. I think for for me, a, a, a successful season would be getting bowl eligible again. I know that doesn't get Florida fans fired up, but you know six wins two years ago, six wins last year. That's not the the Florida standard. But um, given the rebuilding process that, uh, that that Billy Napier was faced with, I think that you have to understand it's a process and it's going to take some time. Chris, do you like what you see from him? I mean, the big picture, the vision, the facilities mm-hmm. are up to speed now, the culture. People talk about that a lot, but you're there. Do you, yeah. do you sense that too? I, I do. I, I like the plan that he had in place. I like the execution to this point in time. And I think maybe the most uh, evidence that I can point to are the relationships that he's developing within the state, within the southeast. Um, the recruiting class that he's putting together for 2024 is amongst the best. Uh, um, you know, going in and flipping kids from Georgia right under Kirby Smart's nose is a is a win that Florida fans will take right now. But um, again, you got to get those guys in. You got to develop them. You got to take some time to they they mature a little bit. Like, I don't think we really see the the full return on investment until you know maybe two more years down the road. Which um, you know a lot of fans want they want a little more instant gratification. There's a lot of speed at receiver that he's brought in, but it's young. How difficult is it as a freshman to play receiver and be asked to play a lot of snaps uh, in the SEC? You know, it, it, it's difficult, but I think it's one of the more easy positions to be able to come in and do that. And I think coaches can make it easier. You know, what I always was was good at was playing all five of the positions. So what you do with a young guy, you bring him in, hey, we're only going to put you at one position. Here's all you need to learn. And you try to, to limit um, some of the reads that they have to make on the run. But um, – you know, I, I think the thing that I'm most impressed with is the the upgrade in two two facets. Size on the defensive line, which you know I've talked about, Frank, before. Yeah, yep. Florida has always been known for having great defensive line play, and the fact they haven't the last couple of years is, is strange. And two, speed at the receiver position. These young guys, they're known for how fast they are. Now, whether that translates to, to catching the football and, and, and production on the field is another thing. But um, clearly there's an emphasis on, on becoming – more physical and becoming faster as a team. Yeah, you got you got to be good on the defensive front, man. No. I, you have to. You have no in college football. Really, all football. Two two no positions: chance. quarterback and defensive line. That's exactly you right. You can win with those two positions being yeah. taken care yeah, of. If you're good at those two, you are. Yeah. Um, Georgia's really good. Have they done it with just recruiting all the good players? He's obviously developed players. He's got everything going on. Is it just about getting all the good guys? I don't think it is. You know, I think it's about getting the good guys. It's about keeping the good guys in this day and age. That's I mean, right. he's done a tremendous job of getting players to understand what their roles are, uh, understanding that they need to be patient. Christopher Smith was a guy that, you know, he, he mentioned um, waited around to get his chance, had that big interception against Clemson two years ago, had another one last year against Oregon. Um, so, there's evidence of, of why you should stay around, what it's going to do in terms of leading to opportunities for you eventually to play, and then NFL draft and money that goes along with that. Um, but I also think there's something special, and you, you can relate to this, Frank, going back to the days when, when Coach Spurrier was at Florida. When the head coach played at the school he's coaching, That's something right. a little special about that. Not only is it, is it him, both 
you know, Mike Bobo, Will Muschamp, all those guys played at Georgia. To, to speak what it means to be a Georgia Bulldog from a firsthand perspective, I think it's a lot more impactful. And, and um, you can tell those guys, they got something special going on up there. How good do you think Georgia will be on offense? I, I feel like a hypocrite, right? Because I look at Alabama and I say, wow, you know, they lost their offensive coordinator. Uh, they lost their quarterback. Uh, I, I really have questions about, you know, where Alabama's headed. And the same is true in Athens. And I have none of those questions. I don't du- yeah. deduct uh, points from, from Georgia the way I do Alabama. But um, I think whoever wins that job, and I expect Carson Beck to probably win that job, but they're surrounded by a lot more talent that can take the pressure off their quarterback position. I, I would have never imagined talking about Alabama having questions about the offensive line and questions at the receiver positions. And those are two groups that have underachieved the last couple of years. And if not for Bryce Young, you know, basically rescuing them in multiple games, I think you're talking about an Alabama team coming off an 8-4 and four season yeah, probably. That's right. That's right. And yeah, no yeah. Bryce Young. He ain't walking through that door again. So you, you better figure it out there in Tuscaloosa. I'll tell you this, and uh, I don't I – don't, I mean, I, Hayes follows the recruiting closer than I do. I know some of the names that I read them. But I saw Carson Beck in high school. Chris, he looked like an NFL guy then. Yeah. And he waited. And he's yeah. waited – nobody waits anymore. Yeah. He waited his he, turn. He, and he's talked about – Realizing that he wasn't ready as a freshman, yeah, yeah, right. and and understanding how much better he's gotten, you know, physically and, and the growth there, but mentally understanding the game a little bit yeah, more. I, yeah. There was a time that everybody came in and got redshirted, right. you know, and I thought the quality of football was better then because totally of agree. what that allowed you to, to do, yeah. mature, uh, maturing physically and, yeah. and mentally. But you know, nowadays it's it's three and 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 done, and so you better squeeze the most you can out of the top talent. How do you feel like Tennessee will do coming off an 11-win season? I'm big. I'm high on Joe Milton. I'm high on Josh Heupel. You know, and um, you know, playing for Coach Spurrier, yeah. he knew how to put guys in position to be successful. And um, you know, I feel like Josh Heupel has that same sort of ability. Uh, another guy in, in Joe Milton, kind of the opposite of what most quarterbacks would do if they lost their job. They'd be in the transfer portal looking to go somewhere else. Um, Joe Milton was a great teammate. He was patient, great friend to Hendon Hooker, and uh, took advantage of his opportunity when he got it last year after the injury. So I, I'm high on, on uh, Tennessee. they got to figure out the defense, p- particularly in the back end, but um, you know, I think that's a program that's definitely on the rise. And, and the SEC is better when Tennessee is good. SEC needs Florida, Tennessee, and Auburn to be good. Uh, and I think both of the, all three of those, those programs are headed in the right direction. In the 90s, you referenced the 90s when I was around Florida a lot. I uh, Back then we could go to practice. Yeah. yeah and practices were open. Everybody yeah. came to practice. But I'd covered Georgia. I'd been, to, I'd been around the SEC. Nobody practiced like y'all did. Yeah. I mean, rep after rep after rep, post corner after post Most corner. Most important after, part, yeah, it, yeah. it's routes on air. You right, know, right. how many times did we just spend period after period amazing. just it, developing the timing and the was rapport? Amazing. Yeah. And I had never seen that yeah. before. I mean, so, so watching Florida do it, I, so I had an understanding of why people couldn't defend you guys because yeah. I watched it. So fast forward. Do you think Tennessee practices like that? And I'm just telling you all I know because we don't get to go to practice yeah. anymore. You think that – because he's got something people can't defend just like Steve did back in the yeah, day. Yeah, and, and what it is, is is having a scheme that allows the quarterback and the receivers to make reads on the run. Some of the deep option right. stuff that they do makes it virtually impossible. And I, I – as much of, uh, of an offensive-minded guy as I am, I actually feel sorry for some of these defenses yeah. today because, of one, the rules you know, lean more in the favor of the offensive players. But, two, to be able to, um, to give them uh, choices where if they make the right reads, they can't be wrong, it, it's, it's tough to defend these days. How do you think that opener will go, LSU versus Florida State? I hope in the way of uh, the, the Bengal Tigers. I mean, you know, that was one of the, the low points of the year last year. LSU looked terrible. And, and credit to Brian Kelly, take that team where they were in game number one to where they finished the end of the year. Just a tremendous coaching job. But um, as much as I dislike Florida State, Mike Norvell's done a great job there. I think Jordan Travis is tremendous. Uh, he got a great chance to win the Heisman Trophy this year, and and uh, I'm excited about the big three getting back. I mentioned you know Tennessee and and Auburn and Florida being good in the SEC, but I think college football is better when the big three in the state of Florida are good too. Final thing, on the flight up here, you and Burns had this bet. You had to wear the the LSU gear, yeah. the base. The stirrups were phenomenal. Let me just say, <laughs> I'm an old guy. Okay, I think it's great the bet and all. 
you went straight stirrups. I, I wish, that was just fantastic. Yeah, they, they, the whole outfit, and, and credit Greg Stringfellow and our guy Jacob Hester, they, they put this package together, authentic. You know, I got not only the purple jersey, I got a throwback, yeah, I got a throwback LSU jersey that I'm going to get Jay Johnson to sign for me. Yeah, the yeah. pants, the stirrups, the sanitary socks, right. the belt, the hat. Uh, even got another warm-up shirt. So I may have lost in terms of the bet and having to pay it off, which was awkward as hell going through all the airports that way. <laughs> that was tremendous. Yeah, but uh, I won in terms of getting gear. I think we all in the media love getting free love gear. gear. Yeah, I got great gear from I, it. I, I tell people now stories where I used to wear sanitaries. They have no idea what I'm talking yeah. about. Okay, no idea. Of course, yeah. we wear sanitaries under the stirrup. So I got, I got criticized right. from some of the, the folks on Twitter for not completing the ensemble with the proper shoes. But you know, yeah. playing baseball. Baseball slides are part of it, right? Exactly. You, you wear to the ballpark. You, you, you got the do. spikes in your bag. All baseball I can't walk fight. through the airport in yeah. metal They're spikes. shower shoes. Exactly. I thought, it was a, I thought the, the, <laughs> the slides were perfect. Chris Dorian from SEC Network. Thanks, buddy. Thanks, guys. Appreciate you guys. All right, Chris Dorian, guys. That's a fantastic job. Back in a moment from SEC Media Days in Nashville.